you got the all call earlier in the week, I know that you know that uh, we have made some changes on some things. The, uh, <clears throat> just some things going on that we were really concerned about from a health standpoint. So we sort of pulled back on some things in an effort to, to be abundantly cautious and careful. So, uh, obviously, you know we suspended Sunday school, we suspended Wednesday night, uh, and um, we're, uh, we will not have uh, our Wednesday night Thanksgiving service uh, this Wednesday night. So we won't do that. So we're just we're pulling back to, to Sunday morning uh, only, Sunday morning worship. And uh, we're asking uh, that you uh, please wear your mask for the duration of the service. If you need a little break, if you need to catch your breath, that's okay. We totally understand that because this thing is very confining. I usually take mine off, but I'm certainly not going to stand up here and ask you to do something. And I'm not doing it either. And I, so I understand it's, it's hot and it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, make the glasses fog up, but, uh, you know, just the numbers uh, uh, for what we for what we know are, are uh, on the rise. It's not a resurgence of, of the virus here in Warren County, but it's, it's just the numbers are increasing. You guys have done a wonderful and great job of, of, of helping in Warren County to keep our numbers down, to keep our numbers good. But we, we are seeing it start to rise. So uh, between that, Thanksgiving is an important time. We know that families are going to be spending time together at Thanksgiving. And, and I, I want y'all to be able to do that however y'all feel comfortable doing that in Christmas. So we just want to be careful in these next few weeks. So we're going to maintain this uh, through the holidays. And then we'll reevaluate. Hopefully uh, there will be some advances in some things. And, and we can, uh, maybe we can start adding some things back. Again. But for right now, uh, this is uh, this is what we're uh, going to try to do. So I appreciate uh, first of all, I appreciate y'all being here this morning. Welcome to Lincoln Baptist Church this morning. I'm thankful to see each and every one of you this morning because I know uh, this is even a, another break added to it. You know, you could have said this morning, well, I'm just not going to, I'm just not going to participate in that. I'm not going to be part of that. But you did come this morning, and I'm so thankful that we're gathered here together in God's house. And I'm thankful for each and every one of you this morning, and I'm glad we can spend uh, this time together. We won't have a bullet. Uh, another thing that uh, I have, uh, that I, I'm going to attempt to do anyway, I, 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 I always I always think about it when we get started, but then I somehow, I don't know what happens to the time, so I ain't going to really try to watch my time because I've been wearing the mask, and that stuff is, is hard, so we, we'll, we'll try to ease, I'm going to ease back on the time, and, you know, if, uh, if I start going too long, y'all just kind of stand up and wave at me or something. <laughs> okay. and we'll, we'll figure out something. But uh, but uh, <clears throat> I am thankful to uh, to be here this morning. Uh, we won't have a bulletin. We won't have the announcements. We'll forego those things. Any information like that, we'll try to get out on you uh, on our all call and some of those things to try to keep you informed about what's going on. And in return, if you guys would please let us know in the church office what's going on, prayer list wise, and those kind of things, so that we can keep those things updated. And we need we need to know who uh, who to uh, put on the praise side, who to put on the prayer side. Uh, one thing I do want to share with you this morning: uh, Barbara K. Stiles is uh, in the hospital. She had, uh, I, I believe they have confirmed she had a slight stroke, small stroke, but she seems to be improving. I talked to her for a few minutes yesterday, and she seemed to be doing pretty good. So please keep on Tay and Robert uh, in your prayers as uh, he's been really sick with bronchitis and breathing issues and, and of course now she's, uh, she's at the Rye Apparel and I think we'll be there for a couple of days. So please lift them up in prayer. I don't know if, I'm sure there are others uh, but um, that's one that I know of that definitely we want to be sure to lift up in prayer this morning. So uh, let's begin our time together by going to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. Lord God, we thank you for your many blessings, Lord. We thank you for this time that we can gather here in your house. And Father, as we are just a few days away from uh, what will be our, our Thanksgiving uh, time, and uh, families gathering together, and Lord, a time of reflection, a time to look back, and a time to just stop and look up and say, Thank you. So, Father, as we approach that time, Lord, help us to uh, just prepare our hearts today, Lord, as we look into your word. Uh, Father, that 
that you would speak to us, that you allow the Holy Spirit to work and move here in this place. And Father, that we would acknowledge an Almighty God. Lord, our Christians, us, the body of this church, Lord, we have more to be thankful for than any any other uh, people on this earth. Lord, there are those who have wealth and uh, possessions and things beyond our imagination, but Lord God, we know without you, Lord, we have nothing. We have nothing that will last. So Lord God, we come today just celebrating Thanksgiving, celebrating you. And Father, we pray for those who are not able to be here, whatever the reason or cause might be. Lord, we know that there are those right here in our community, Lord, that are facing head on, face to face, this COVID, this virus. Lord God, we pray for them. Lord, we ask that you would, uh, Lord, just touch your bodies. And Lord, keep the keep it keep it mild, and Lord, and keep it easy, that Lord, they would recuperate and recover quickly. Father, for those who are facing, Lord, much bigger health challenges even. Uh, Lord, we, we just ask for your healing hand, your comforting touch. And uh, Lord, we ask that you would just touch their body. And, and Lord, we ask for healing and, and help. Lord, for those who are physically not able to get out and be here, those who are homebound, those who are in nursing homes, Lord God, we pray for your hand of protection on them as they are where they are. And Lord, they, they need uh, folks around that can love them and take care of them. Father God, I pray you put those people in place. Lord, to just uh, to love on them and to care for them and be kind to them. And Father, we look forward to a time when we will have all these restrictions. Lord, all the things that seem to be going on in this world, Lord, if we can. Lord, we're able to walk up and shake hands, and Lord, we're able to hug each other, and Lord, we're able to see each other face to face with nothing covering our face. And Lord God, we just look forward to that time. And Lord, we know that that is in your plan and in your way, and Lord, you'll, you'll, you'll provide and make all those things for us. And Lord, we'll just look to you and say thank you all along the way. Father God, again, as we come to you this morning, Lord, uh, we just ask you to have your way with us right now in this very moment, in this very place, in this very time. Lord God, we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And this morning, if you have your Bibles, and I hope that you do, if you find your way over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I'm going to look at verse 16, 17, and 18 together this morning. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and uh, we'll start in verse 16. Now, uh, normally, this is, a, this is a few days before Thanksgiving, so uh, uh, normally we would have a Thanksgiving service on Wednesday night. We're not going to do that this year. I would, uh, again, I uh, would a caution to uh, not, not be gathered together uh, more than we, we, we have to be to try to keep everybody healthy. Uh, as we as we move closer and closer to maybe this thing coming to an end, but uh, so I wanted to talk about this this morning. I want to talk about Thanksgiving this morning, and uh, maybe you know even next Sunday we'll talk about Thanksgiving again. That way, if we if we have something that couldn't be here this Sunday, if we're here next Sunday, uh, of course that'll be after Thanksgiving. But hey, uh, we know as Christians that every day, every day from a Christian heart is a day. A Thanksgiving. You know, we don't need to set aside a day. That's the only day that we're thankful. We know that's not how we live our lives. We know that we know that because of what Christ did for us on the cross, that we can be thankful every single day. Now, First Thessalonians chapter five, starting in verse sixteen, it says, "Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you." In Christ, uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, just a few short verses here. And, you know, look, it, it really kind of it, it sets the tone. I think of, if we stop and we look at what's going on in our world today, in this country, how many of you would agree that we live in a faithless society? Uh, the society we live in, no matter how good things seem to be, it's like we always want some more. Well, now look, yeah, look, I'm, I'm glad I got the things I've got, but look, they shouldn't be the things that I have, and we're not very thankful for those things. The majority of our cultural, uh, of our culture lives with an attitude of entitlement. And look, we've been seeing that more 
more and more uh, in, in these in these last days uh, of <clears throat> dealing with this virus. We feel that <coughs> excuse me. We feel we're entitled to, to better everything, right? We're entitled to uh, better pay, better benefits. We're entitled to more stuff. We're entitled to have everything that we think that we ought to have. We feel that if we cannot afford some of these things, our, the society that we live in today says that we can't afford these things. Well, hey, man, I pay taxes. I pay a lot of taxes. The government ought to, ought to pick up the check where I fall short at and I can't have some things and our society is, 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 is yelling that out at the top of their lungs. We have basically evolved into a society made up of a bunch of spoiled brats. That's what it amounts to. The majority never stops to give thanks for what they have, but loudly voices their desire to have more. <laughs> More and more. How much? I often thought about that. How, how much is enough to say that we have enough? The bottom line is that we have enjoyed so many blessings that we have become expected upon those blessings. We're so blessed. We're so blessed that we, we sort of we sort of take that for uh, for granted, and we just expect that to happen. We have even begun to display the, the same attitude. When it comes to God and prayer, that we just take Him for granted. People don't acknowledge God anymore or give Him the credit He deserves as the Creator of the universe. Okay, so that's just a few words. Creator of the universe. Have you ever stopped to think about what, what, what all does that say? That is a big mouthful in a few words. God. Creator of the universe. How big is the universe? I don't know. It's pretty big, though, right? I think it probably means everything that's ever been made, everything that's been created. God created everything from nothing. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of scientists. I guess the people in science and, and education and academia and all that, and, and, and you know they 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 would take credit really quickly for some. Some uh, some uh, invention, maybe I would use that word rather than creation. They would like to call it a creation, but they have never taken nothing and made something. Only God could take nothing and make something, and not just something, but something wonderful and and, and good. You know, scientists would rather believe that we evolved from from something that slithered up out of the ocean or or some some monkey. Then be thankful to God for creating mankind. People are no longer thankful that Christ died on the cross for their sins. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. They feel that they can save themselves. We live in a society that says, if I learn enough, if I save enough, if I, if I make enough, if I build enough, Man, I can stack it up and I can make my way to heaven. They feel they can save themselves or that they can make it to heaven on their own terms. People don't give God honor and glory for their success in business. They'll tell you that, look, all that I have, look at all the things that I have, it's all because of my hard work. It's all because of the things that I have accomplished. In our text today, the Apostle Paul seems to tell us that a thankful heart shows that we are a healthy Christian. You know, when we go to the doctor, that's one thing that they will always do, right? I don't care if you go for an ear infection or whatever. They're going to usually listen to that heart, right? They always listen to that heart. And you know, that's one of the things that the doctor can tell about you know, when you're, you know, your heartbeat is good and solid. You hear a lot of things when they listen to your chest, your heartbeat, and, and all that, how strong it sounds and all. There's so much that a doctor can tell when he 
listens to our heart and again a thankful heart a thankful heart thanksgiving a heart is full of thanks it's a, it's a heart it's a heart that's healthy for a Christian in fact in verse 18 Paul writes give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus so God expects us to be thankful people so once again, as a Christian, we are called to live counter to the culture that we live in. We're, we're, we're called to live different than the world that we live in. So we, uh, we with, so with the approach of, of thanksgiving, let us discover how to have a thankful heart in an unthankful world. We need to realize that we are not entitled to what we have, but understand that we are blessed by God, from God, our blessings come from Him, the things that we have. You know, yes, yes, you have worked hard for the things you have. Uh, you know, some of it is physical labor, yes, you know, back-breaking, hand-hurting labor, but thank God He gave us the physical strength and the health to be able to, to have those things, to, 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 to have that health and the ability to be able to work Whatever it is, whether you work with your hands or your mind, or whatever it is that God blessed you with, He gave that to us. You know, despite the, the things that are going on in this world today, we have uh, we have so much wealth in the United States that we just take for granted the simple blessings that are all around us every day. We don't even see the blessings hardly anymore. You know, if we stop and think about it, we'll eventually get ourselves around to that. But sometimes it takes us a little while to get ourselves worked back around to realizing that the things that we have been so blessed with are blessings from the Lord. What we consider to be poverty today far outseeds the standard of living that most people enjoy. Just 50 years ago or 75 years ago or 100 years ago, look, some of y'all, I'm sure, that have grown up in rural North Carolina appreciate that more than uh, than a lot of people when you were when you were younger and you've grown up and you've seen how we have uh, how we have been so blessed and the things that that we have now <clears throat> you know uh, just a few years ago uh, that was such a different story America well, Americans are fascinated by technology and gadgets and I, I have to tell you I'm one of those I love gadgets I love a little electronic stuff and all that kind of thing we have gained more possessions for ourselves today than at any other time in history. We got all kind of this and that. And, and look, man, you know, battery-operated drills. I love, I love a battery-operated tool. It just took me. You know, I don't have to drag out a drop cord and do all that kind of stuff. But look, we, we do. We have, we have more technology than we've ever had at any time in history. We have reached the point in history where things such as Food and clothing and shelter are no longer seen as blessings, but we look at those things in our life. We think that when we sit down at the table, that we should have food on that table. We think it just it's, it's our right uh, as an American citizen that our government should make sure that we sit down at the table and there's food on the table, that we can get up in the morning and we're guaranteed that we can have a job. We reach that point where. Those things aren't blessings to us anymore, but they're things that we ought to have and we should have. They're our right to have. While a great portion of the world looks at the United States and sees great wealth, we tend to view it as what we're entitled to for being Americans. If we encounter a situation that causes us to have, to tighten our belts up, Y'all heard that term, tightening your belt up? So we have to tighten things up or we have to change our standard of living. We're upset because we feel we're being denied what is rightfully ours. <coughs> then he said to them, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. 
Man's life does not consist in, a, in the abundance of his possessions. That comes from Luke chapter uh, 12 and verse 15. Let me read that again. And then he said to him, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the consist in the abundance of his possessions. The thankful heart is usually a humble heart. The thankful heart is usually humble. A heart that gladly acknowledges God. Man, sometimes you get up in the morning and it's a beautiful morning and the sun is shining and you maybe you walk out on the front porch or you look out the window or or you, you some just something. It's just something that sort of grabs your attention. And you just can't help but just stop right then and right there in that very moment and just look up and say, thank you, God. Thank you for your many blessings. Lord, thank you for blessing me so much to, to, to be able to look up this morning and see the sunshine, to feel the warmth of the sun on my face, to know I'm surrounded by, by family and friends. You see, when we understand that God is the source of all blessings, our natural response should be gratitude. This morning, do you have a heart filled with gratitude? When you gather together, and this will be different. This will be different for a lot of us this uh, Thursday. When we gather together, we'll gather together in some way, some form, or fashion. It might not be what we always done. But we'll still have the opportunity to gather together. There'll still be food on the table, and we'll still be blessed people, blessed beyond measure. Thanksgiving allows us the opportunity to put everything in proper perspective. It gives us that pause. It gives us that pause on Thanksgiving Day to stop put everything in proper perspective and to thank God for that which he has so richly blessed us with. You know, again, my prayer is that we would do that every day when we get up. The minute that our brains start realizing, hey, I'm alive today. I'm getting up. I can move. I'm going to go about some things today. That we would be thankful for those blessings. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. For every animal, for every animal of the forest is mine, says the Lord. For every animal of the forest is mine, and the cattle of a thousand. Man is the God that we serve. God is the owner of everything. He is the source of all that we have. And everything that we have, He has chosen to bless us with. You know, even the things in our life sometimes that don't seem like they're blessings at that particular moment, God intends them to be for our good and for building us and strengthening us and encouraging us. And sometimes, man, the lessons are kind of hard to learn. I know especially for hard-headed people like me. But man, God tries to bless me with something and I fight him all the way on it, right? I fight him all the way. And I, and I miss a lot of the blessing in that because I, I do push back. Instead of saying, God, help me to see what it is you want me to see in this thing that you're doing in my life. God is the owner of everything. A truly thankful heart will truly change your life. Oh yes, it changes your life. It changes you. It changes me. It will draw you closer to your Heavenly Father and it will make you more conscious of His presence in your life every day, not just Thanksgiving Day. So, we'll close with be thankful. Be thankful.
Be joyful always. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I'm thankful today. I'm thankful for each and every one of you because you guys are a blessing for God for me and to me. And I'm thankful to have this opportunity to be with you this morning. You know that the greatest thankfulness again is that gift of salvation that Christ gave us on Calvary's cross. This morning as I look around this room, I know that we all know we all have people around us. They don't they don't have the thankfulness that we have because they never experienced God's salvation in their lives. You know, we can only really be truly thankful when we know the grace and the mercy of the loving God, the loving Jesus. Look, when all the life just seems to be falling all the pieces, when it's all on the ground and, and hundreds of thousands of pieces and you don't even know where to start picking up the parts and pieces, we still can be thankful because of what Christ did for us on the cross because he knows where every one of those pieces in our lives he knows how to pick them up. He knows how to put them back. He knows how to restore us when we have been broken. Pray for that one in your life today who doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Pray for that one. Let's don't stop. We can't stop. You know, we're facing a lot of things in this world today. But the biggest, the biggest pandemic that has ever been and ever will be is sin. And it's a separation of Christ Jesus in our lives. We need to pray for those who don't know that cure. But if you're that name of Jesus, we need, to, we need to pray for that cure for those who don't know it. And we know in these other things that God is working in those things too. He works in everything. He owns everything. Everything that we have. Let's pray for it. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day. And Lord God, we thank you for your many blessings. Lord, we thank you for our time to spend together this morning. And Lord God, we ask that you would just speak to our hearts and Lord. Lord, if there's just something we need to you need to deal with us on, Lord, that we'll just we'll freely open ourselves up and, and Lord let you just have everything. Lord, uh, you already know everything there is to know about us. Father, we just simply want us to acknowledge that we freely want to belong to you, every part of us, every part of our heart and our mind and everything that we are. Lord God, we want you to have and to hold. Father, we ask that you do place Lord a, a, a witness in the in the life of, of those that are lost and undone. Lord, it needs to be not a witness of this world, but Lord God, a witness to the mercy and grace of the love of Jesus. That we can just simply tell the world what you've done for us. Lord, we can tell them of your gracious salvation. Lord, we can tell them on this Thanksgiving why we are so thankful, why we can be so thankful in the face of it seems like a world that is turned upside down. So Lord, we let us pause and just look up and say thank you. Lord God, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We will have a time of invitation if you if there's something that you'd like to come to all and pray about, please. I'm going to do that. Please be respectful. There's others here to make sure we can have space to do that. If you'd like to have prayer uh, after the service, please come and see me. We can do that in a more private setting. So, uh, we're in our service now with the time of time of invitation. Please. Sing. Mm -hmm.